Hello and welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. Today we're talking about the Recreants. Don't forget there are massive Oathbringer spoilers here, so be sure to turn it off now and go back to reading the book if you haven't finished it yet. Seriously, we'll wait. The book is awesome. Go do it. Should definitely do that. Yes. For those of you who are still here, we have quite the discussion for you today because... Now, you guys, we know the reason for the recreants. Oh, As, yeah. Yeah. Uh, joining, uh, I am Carrie, of course. Joining us today are... I'm Ian. I'm Eric. And holy crap, you guys, we got the reveal. Finally. this. I'm glad we got it in this book because... It was teased a lot in this book, so if we didn't get it, I would be really pissed off. Yeah, definitely. Like what? It's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, Brandon was sending pretty big signals that it was going to be the part of part of the Bravalanche that it was yeah. going to come out. Yeah, like what? We had Leshri and Moash. Leshri's like, let me tell you about the secret lord. That's not what she said. But <laughs> basically, like, let me tell you about this secret. Like, oh, what What else? Oh, that, that's the that's the Peter Facebook status version of what she said. If you guys yeah, haven't, right. If you guys haven't seen the 10 soon thing that he posted, please go look at that because it's beautiful. Mm. Um, Anyways, uh, so Ian found something really cool about the recreants that I looked that we should uh, we should discuss before we get into things. Oh yeah, yes, and it's so for like the past five years, like I've been reading the Stormlight Archive, and I was like, recreants, that's a cool word. And it wasn't until like two months ago where I found out like it's actual ba- actually based off of a real word, recreant. Which, yeah. as an adjective, means cowardly or unfaithful to a belief, which totally fits because it's like cow. Um, the knights essentially like turning against what they believed in and like betraying everything and being cowards. Blah 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 blah. It's good. They literally betrayed their oaths. It's yeah. very fitting. I, I mean. Brandon teaches us all sorts of new words because now in our vocabulary, we can just use the word odium and odious and just like, oh, yeah, I know the word odium. I know all about it. (laughs) And so now we got recreant. So, yeah, that's the word. And so in light of that, let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of uh, a little bit of background and why this happened. Ooh, yeah. We finally, we finally get it in part four after uh, Yasna talking with Ivory, like I, I know about the recreants. Nail and Zeth talking, I know about the recreants. And part four, we get it with the uh, Isla Stale. At the end of Staley. part four, yeah. Staley, sure. That that's fine. I don't have any problem with that pronunciation. Just Nale, I have a problem with that. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. I'm I'm sure YouTube commenters out there, please tell us how you say it. They 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 haven't actually commented on that yet, so they should definitely do that. Um, Isla is actually a city in southern Erie by the Misted Mountains, next to Shinovar, Which, when we read this quote, will will make sense. Yes, but so probably the Isla Stele was found near Isla. It's probably yeah, like a yeah, Rosetta absolutely. Stone sort of thing, like right. named for where it was found. Right, exactly. But so Navani um, reads the transcription of the Isla to, um, to Dalinar. And it's, ca- it's from the Dawn Chant, right? Yes, it, it was yeah. written in the Dawn Chant. Yeah, and they translated it finally. Yes, using um, the visions as a um, cipher sweet um they came from another world navani said reading from her sheet using powers that we have been forbidden to touch dangerous powers of spren and surges they destroyed their lands and have come to us begging we took them in as commanded by the gods what else could we do they were a people forlorn without home our pity destroyed us for their betrayal extended even to our gods to spren stone and wind Beware the other worlders, the traitors, those with tongues of sweetness but minds that lust for blood. 
do not take them in, do not give them succor. Well they were well were they named void bringers, for they brought the void, the empty pit that sucks in emotion, a new god, their god. These void bringers know no songs, they cannot hear Roshar, and where they go they bring silence. They look soft, with no shell, but they are hard. They have but one heart, and it cannot ever live. And at this point, like they talk about they figure out that it was not written by a human. It was nope. written by a Dawn singer, aka a, the Parsh. A yeah. Yes. A singer. The Dawn singers are just singers. Oh. Yeah. And it's then really obvious. Yasna says, I have suspected this for a time. The first desolation was the invasion of humankind onto Roshar. We came here and seized this land from the Parshmen after we accidentally used Surge Binding to destroy our previous world. That is the truth that destroyed the Radiance. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with Yasna's assessment there. Because I don't think the desolation was actually the first point where humankind came to Roshar. I think they came to Roshar, they settled in Shinovar, and then they decided, like, Shinovar's not big enough, we want the entire planet. And that was the first desolation. And what, however, Odium is involved, which is complicated, but at some point... As we'll see, Odium, you know, the humans were the Voidbringers, and they, they did have stuff from Odium. Yes. Initially. And so that that's pretty crazy. And I mean, we've been saying for a while now that humans probably aren't native to Roshar. Nope. It just doesn't make sense biologically for no. them to have evolved on that planet. They're all carapacy and crustacean-y and like horses are not not doesn't make sense on Roshar and none of that makes sense on Roshar and so it makes sense that humans aren't from there and then uh Dalinar then after that realization uh converses with the storm father about this did you really think you belonged here the storm father asked that you were native to Roshar? Yes, maybe, Dalnar said. I thought maybe we came from Shinovar originally? That is the land you were given, the Stormfather said. A place where the plants and animals you brought here could grow. That, that and makes then, sense. So they, they continue on... Uh, you know, in this vein of thought for a little bit, and then the, la- the Stormfather continues, but I do remember... It was not only the truth of humankind's origin that caused the recreants, it was the distinct, powerful fear that they would destroy this world, as men like them had destroyed the one before. The Radiants abandoned their vows for that reason, as will you. Yeah, it's not just the origin. They destroyed the Tranquilin Halls. Which makes you wonder, like, what happened there? (laughs) that that's a podcast <laughs> <laughs> so later on the stormfather continues in the past honor was able to guard against this the stormfather told him he conceived the radiance they he convinced the radiance they were righteous even if this land hadn't originally been theirs who cares what your ancestors did when the enemy is trying to kill you right now but in the days leading to the recreants honor was dying When that generation of knights learned the truth, Honor did not support them. He raved, speaking of the Dawn Shards, ancient weapons used to destroy the Tranquil and Halls. Honor promised that Surge Binders would do the same to Roshar. Odium claimed the same thing. He can see the future, though only cloudily. Regardless, I understand now as I never did before. The ancient Radiants didn't abandon their oath out of pettiness. They tried to protect the world. I blame them for their weakness, their broken oaths. But I also understand. You have cursed me, human, with this capacity. The Dawn Shards! This is like one of the concrete... What? That's crazy. Yeah. And, like, we still don't know for sure what the Dawn Shards are. Absolutely not. We have absolutely no idea, other than they apparently... uh 
bind any creature, voidish or mortal, and apparently destroyed the Tranquil Nalls, I guess. Yeah. And that Surge Binders would destroy Roshar. That's, that's the crazy thing. It's not just, oh, we're the invaders. No, we really screwed up. We destroyed the past place. We're going to do it now again. Well, and, you have. Yeah, they kind of did, which we'll get into yeah, a little oh, later on. Yeah, they definitely did screw up that last generation of knights, but. Um, and we have Syl and Kaladin talking about it as well. Okay. He let her inspect, inspect it for a moment more. Um, it's true then, he finally said, about the Parshman, that this was their land, their world before we arrived, that that we were the Voidbringers? She nodded. Odium is the Void, Kaladin. He draws an emotion and doesn't let it go. You, you brought him with you. I wasn't alive then, but I know this truth. He was your first god before you turned to honor. Whoa. Okay. And then Kaladin thinks about some stuff, and he continues a little later on. The Recreants, he said to Sil. I always imagined it as a single event. A day the knights all gave up their shards, like in Dalinar's vision. But I don't think it actually happened like that. Then how? Sil asked. Like this, Kaladin said. He squinted, watching the light of a setting sun play on the ocean. They found out something they couldn't ignore. Eventually, they had to face it. They made the wrong choice. Kaladin pocketed the stone. The oaths are about perception, Sil. You confirmed that. The only thing that matters is whether, whether or not we are confident that we are obeying our principles. If we lose that confidence, then dropping the armor and weapons is only a formality. Cal- I'm not going to do the same, he said. I'd like to think that the past of Bridge 4 will make us a little more pragmatic than those ancient radiants. We won't abandon you. Finding out what we will do might end up being messy. That's an interesting oh quote, because the Stormfather does say rather explicitly there that they tried to protect the world. That That's ultimately why they, they gave them up. And so I, I imagine that it wasn't like, screw you, Spren, we're murdering you. Like, I, I think there was some honor in what they were thinking that, yeah, this is some act to protect. Yeah, like, they, it seems like they probably considered it a necessary evil to right. basically put a check on this unchecked power that destroyed one world and was, in their perception, about to destroy another. Yeah. Yeah. They, they tried, which is what, like, that's like kind of like in the in core belief of the radiance. Like they try to be better people. It's like they try to make the best of a horrible situation. Yeah, and it might not have been the best idea, but like it's they thought it was. I mean, so there are there are definitely people on the forums and stuff who were like not. They didn't get it with the Radiance, like, and the Recreants. They they couldn't understand how it would work. But there's there's so many moving pieces that it's not only humans are invaders. Uh, they conquered out and were the Voidbringers. So like that's that's a thing. But also, your god Honor is raving. Not only. All that stuff, but you are going to destroy this world like the last one, too. Yeah, when your god is screaming that at you, it's gonna mess you up in the head a little bit, because the previous generations of Radiance, they had honor there to guide them through and tell them no, because, you know, you have these these oaths, these ways of life guiding you, you can use these powers for good and not screw things up. And with that last generation, he went from guiding them to using it for a better purpose to just raving lunacy. Well, there's a line in um, Edge Dancer, I believe, where like Nale talks about like 
Ooh. the greater power of the odes and like honor not being there to like moderate that and that just reminded me of like the difference between soul casting as a radiant and soul casting as a fabrial in that like soul casting as a fabrial is like you it's not exactly safe it no <laughs> turns you it into a creepy you stone person or like smoke person or but whatever like, you're you, essencing into basically yeah but like if you a surge binder doesn't necessarily have that danger Restriction. like yeah res- right yeah like it's like there are protections built into the bond so what if it's not like the surge binding via spren that's the danger what if it's like search finding via fabrial that like that's the thing that like unchecked will oh destroy the planet but like well that's not good because <laughs> that's what we're doing now <laughs> i can and kind like, of see part it. of it was like honor was going insane like he knew he wasn't going to be around he wasn't going to be able to protect the people with the spread and like that could cause issues sure. or something I, I can see it both ways, because on one hand, you do have the increased danger to the user soul casting via Fabrial, where you're basically turning into a smoke person or a plant person or what have you. However, there's not a whole lot you can do, comparatively speaking, with a soul casting Fabrial. They can do pretty much one thing, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. But Well, most of them. Ca- there are yeah. a few that can yeah. do more. Generally speaking, they can do maybe a couple things, but the applications are limited. Mm -hmm. And then you have soul casting via Spren. And yes, the bond does protect the user from the consequences of what they're doing. And you see with Yasna's montage of pure undiluted awesome that soul casting via Spren, the world is your plaything. It's very powerful. And Really, Radiance as a whole, they have a ludicrous amount of power and crap that they can do. Mm-hmm. And we haven't even seen, like, full Radiance. <laughs> like, that's yeah. that's the crazy thing. We well, haven't they, even seen full Radiance, really. We don't so, know what rank Yasna is. So we, well, yeah. true, true. But, like, who knows how crazy Kaladin and Shallan can be when yeah, they're, we, like, fully mm-hmm. progressed. We haven't seen 100% on-screen confirmed full Radiance. We've seen Yasna, and some people suspect that she's a full Radiant, but we don't have it on-screen confirmed. And True. It, but my point is being that, like, example for Yasna to be able to turn anything into anything else, yeah. or for Kaladin to just be like, down, uh, up is down for you now, <laughs> and just launch people into space, like... There's a danger to the surroundings in that if you have enough people using that power unchecked. And so if you have these oaths to guide people Mm -hmm. into using it for the right thing instead of just however they feel like, then you've got honor sort of guiding them into that. Be like, no, it's okay. You're not the bad guys because you're not doing what they were. You know, your ancestors are at fault, not you. You can be better than that. And sure. then he turns and says, you guys have too much power. You're going to destroy everything. Mm-hmm. And like in one of um, Talonar's visions where he meets Noadon, like Noadon does talk about like the danger of surge binders, like before like the radiance existed. Right. That like there was one that sparked a war. Yeah. And- yeah. Like it, surge binders are very powerful. I think maybe the worry at the end with Honor, which, a- as we're going to talk about around the Recreant's time, which was really the part three epigraphs that we read, uh, like, those those knights had interesting struggles, and things were not going super great for them. Uh, and maybe Honor is just like, I'm, I'm dying, and you guys are not like the knights of old. You're going to screw things up. And not only that, they have access to more power than just a a regular surge binder would, right? Like before the, like the radiance existed, I I don't imagine those surge binders could be insanely powerful, but the radiance, a single radiant is insanely powerful. 
Uh, and so they have access to more crazy crap that they can do, mm-hmm. I think. Whereas, like, previously, like, if you don't have the ideals, you're not that amazing. So, yeah. if, if Honor's thinking that their worthiness is not good, then, yeah, you you might get worried. I'm I'm a god who's dying and, you know, all this you and you guys are so powerful and you're going to you're going to destroy the world you will do that eventually mm-hmm. uh well there there is a destroyed world uh and yes I right think, next door <laughs> yeah and we should we should probably talk about where where those humans came from right mm-hmm. this has yeah, been a topic came, of contention they came from the tranquil and halls but where are the tranquil and halls eric i know you are very passionate about this well i mean it's ashen right there's three planets in the rosharan system roshar braze and ashen and like it's mentioned in this book that like you can see i think it's mentioned you can see the tranquil and halls and damnation in the sky there are planets nearby yeah, there's actually a quote from the Rosharan Systemance essay in Arcanum Unbounded. There is Ashen, the burning planet, which suffered a cataclysm long ago. People here live in small pockets of survivability, including the famous floating cities. Hmm, a now, something the- I would like to say, if huh. you go back and listen to our podcast on the Arcanum Unbounded essays, I brought this up, that maybe the cataclysm was whatever forced the migration to Roshar. Oh. oh and I people disagreed with me. I believed well, you. Yes. I, I don't even remember that. I don't remember what I did last week, though, so. Uh, but, yeah, maybe the, I think it's the planet that suffered a cataclysm in the same system. Maybe it's that one. I, I have yeah. this sneaking suspicion that that would be where the humans came from. I don't know. Apparently, this is this is contentious. Like it's not one hundred percent confirmed, but well, it's, it it kind of is. Like we now it do is. have we have a word of Brandon. Yeah. Uh, would you like to read that, Ian? Yes, it's from the Oathbringer Portland signing. It's a questioner, a friend of mine wanted me to ask: Was the cataclysm that rocked Ashen and forced its inhabitants inhabitants into the flying cities investiture based? And if it was, was it shardic in nature? Brandon answers, the same cataclysm that the, did you finish Oathbringer? Yes, blah, 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 blah. The same cataclysm that they were fleeing that they caused is the one that forced people into the skies. The so same cataclysm that they caused. Yep. Ashen. So, the expulsion, they were expelled from Ashen. And I think that makes a, a great amount of sense with the Voran mythology is like, the Voidbringers pushed us away from the Tranquil and Halls. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, oh, they did. Yeah, I guess. I guess Technically, they, yes. Yeah, and not to just mention, kind of just from a, yeah. from a practical standpoint, we know that space is different in Shadesmar, right? Like, obviously, if there's a big, gigantic sp- spot of where there's no cognitive activity, that's a very short distance in Shadesmar. Right. So mm-hmm. you're, I'm presuming, using Shadesmar to hop to another world as refugees because that's what you do. That's what you do. You don't have space. And Especially one like in the same system. Like what, that yeah, has so, to be a fairly easy. So track. you're fleeing. You're fleeing Earth, right? Like we're a bunch of planet hoppers. Earth is destroyed because we're idiots with our magic. We hop <laughs> into Shadesmar, going to look for help and for a new place to settle. Are we going to go to? Mars, or are we going to go to Kepler? Uh, I think we're going to go to Andromeda. That is clearly the most logical explanation, Carrie. But no, you're, Alpha you're, you're Centauri. Totally... Yeah, no, Andromeda. I I meant what I said. Uh, let's go just uh, to a, a whole new galaxy. These other planets nearby. Screw it. Uh, like, no, you're, you're obviously you're totally going right. to go to the per- place that's closest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It. It definitely makes sense that it would just be Ashen. Some people were thinking it was Yolan, but I know. No. Now, with that word of Brandon, it's very clear. It's Ashen. And hasn't Yolan, like, vanished? It's not it's clear. unclear. 
Because, like, Chris says, like, oh, it's Cosmere Standard, which is based off Yolan, so how would she know that if Yolan's gone? Right? But, like, at the same time, as of um, Miss Bornera 1, she hasn't been there yet, that it's right. shrouded. Yeah, yeah it's right. exactly. Like, it, it's really not clear how that actually works. Yeah. So. Probably somebody from Yolan is an arcanist and brought that standard with mm-hmm. them. That does that 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 does. That's seem entirely possible. Uh who knows? I love. I don't know. I I think the the recreants make sense to me. Like you you have all, all of this, and you know hu- humans do want to expand, and so it does make sense that some war would break out. You have a. Uh, and and you and who knows how much odium had to do with it. I mean, obviously, some, but... I'm going to guess that... I mean, because there were probably people who wanted to expand out anyway. Sure, yeah. And I would... It's not that much of a stretch for me to believe that odium gave them a little help in doing so. Well, there's another word of Brandon... That I don't have, so I'm going to quickly That's go okay. look it up. You, we'll just you can cut, look it up right on yeah. <laughs> our fantastic Word of Brandon archive, Arcanum. Yep. Hashtag plug. Yep, yep. We'll, um, we'll shill for our stuff, especially well, when it's useful for finding things. Um, while Ian's looking that up, though, I would like to point out that, especially for a book coming out in 2017, I love the commentary on, imperial, on imperialism and on its consequences generations later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I did find it. Um it's from the Oathbringer Glasgow signing and it's oh. from Hoydenalsium, which is an awesome name. <laughs> Love the username. <laughs> yes. So it's Hoydenalsium. What was the order of the shards coming to Roshar and changing allegiances? Did ho- humans come with odium? So Brandon says like so you're talking about on Roshar specifically. Oh, right. So odium had visited Roshar the humans gave him more of an ear. The Dawn Singers would have considered him the god of the people who had come, but, I mean, it wasn't like they necessarily brought him. He was capable of getting around before that. I mean, he kind of, he did kind of come along with them. He was instrumental in what happened there. Okay, but he was separate, and after Honor and Cultivation had settled there, yes, he was after Honor and Cultivation had settled. So what if the humans fled Ashen and settled on Roshar, and yep. then Odium came and like whispered into their yeah. ears, and like you yeah. must invade. Well, that sounds pretty invaded. much exactly it. Yeah, because you know the gods that like the singers were saying, oh, the gods ordered us to take them in, right? Mm-hmm. So the, I assume that means honor and cultivation. That makes sense, right? Yeah, uh, that they took and the I'm- humans in, but then. Then later, the singers realized, do not do that. That is a terrible idea. And mm-hmm. they didn't really know that. Oh, but, yeah. But I, I, I think there them. was a time where, like, there was peace. And no, then Odium came and ruined it. No, I, exactly, I, because, I, like, I agree. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because also, if the humans are showing up with Odium coming with them, are Honor and Cultivation no. really going to say, let them in? That no. doesn't make any sense. No. No, no. but it, it, it's just that, yeah, humans were more acceptable to listening to Odium, and then Odium just pushed them along like, yeah, you, you should invade, and then later, I guess, giving them powers and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. That That seems really sensible to me. You and know, then at some point they switched, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah, how? Uh, yeah, Odium went to the singers, and then Honor went to the humans. The heralds occurred at some point. What happened? That's mm-hmm. that's a podcast right there. Yes, like that's super weird. Um, I. Uh, a- after learning about the recreants, I looked back at some old epigraphs, and some are particularly great. Uh, can, can, can I go read this next one? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is the very first death rattle, actually. The love of men is a frigid thing. 
a mountain stream only three steps from the ice. We are his. Or, oh, storm father, we are his. It is but a thousand days and the Everstorm comes. Hmm. We are his, guys. Hmm. Humans being of Odium? I think it's literally right there in the first one. Yeah. That sounds plausible. It is, yeah. Brain is just more subtle about it now rather yeah. than, you know, oh, the world's on my arms. Like, it's really obvious in retrospect. Whereas this, this one's a little more yeah. subtle, but it's right there. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, don't forget the Thalen religion. The oh, passions. yeah. The yeah. passions. Yeah, right. Like, Odium has been pervasive in, like, all of this. That, you know, not to get off on a tangent, but Odium's pervasiveness just makes me wonder how much crap cultivation is doing that we just don't know about, that no one knows about. Oh, like, so much. There must be so much, right? There's a, a, another... <laughs> Or to friend it. And I mean, it makes sense because she's very, as we see in Oathbringer, she's very plant themed and Mm -hmm. like root networks spreading underground where you can't see them, but they affect everything around you. Yeah. Okay. So from the Oathbringer London siding, Gavin Sunson Odegaard asked, how does cultivation figure in this conflict between Odium? Brandon. So what people assume is that cultivation is hiding. I would disagree with that. <laughs> People in world would assume that. Yeah, which is which is exactly what we see in world. But when yeah. there's three shards on a planet, you know Brandon has extensively plotted out everything that all three of those shards have done. 100%. Yeah. And I, I think cultivation strength is in planning. Like her plan with like Dalinar recovering his memories. Like I think that's how... That's how she's interacting with this fight in things that like we might not things she set up like ages ago that we might not know about are going to bear fruit, so to speak, ah, oh, yeah. And, yeah, and right help in this matter. I agree because like she can't exactly risk a direct in direct confrontation with Odium. So that like does seem unwise. she's forced to like be a step removed, plan, do these things. But but at the same time, like, how much did Cultivation do before Honor died? Like, she could have, you know, been a lot more active back then. Like, totally. Uh, we still don't know. Like, she yeah, exactly. probably was. Yeah, ex- exactly. Like, I'm sure... <laughs> Maybe book four, who knows? But <laughs> it could just be book four. But in a later book, we'll just go back and be like, wow, that was really obvious. That was very cultivation-y just immediately. Like yep. like with the passions and Thalen. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's really odium-y. That's interesting. But that's, but that's why we love Brandon's craft so much, right? Yeah. Is that he can put these things in in such a way that it's actually foreshadowing, but we don't recognize it yet that because we don't yeah. know the signs to look for. And then you read it back a second time and you're like, holy crap, he's just flagging this left and right. Oh, yeah. So we've got another uh, another couple of uh, of death rattles here. Speaking of things that were flagged that we didn't recognize as foreshadowing. <laughs> exactly. Victory. We stand atop the mount. We scatter them before us. Their homes become our dens. Their lands are now our farms, and they shall burn as we once did in a place that is hollow and forlorn. That, so, yeah. That's pretty damn obvious. Yeah. That mm-hmm. sounds like the humans. It, taking over the singers. Humans ruin everything. Yeah. That's, humans are jerks, you guys. I, well, I mean, the singers. I mean, the singers did get pretty screwed over. There, yeah. For sure. And we have another one. Um, All the world was shattered, Maps yelled, back arching, eyes wide, flecks of red spittle on his cheeks. The rocks trembled with their steps, and the stones reached towards the heavens. We die. We die. That sounds like Surge Binders breaking the world, or something breaking the world. Possibly. 
things are going to get bad eventually, guys, mm-hmm. I think. Probably very, very badly, I, I, very quickly. For all we know, the, the curtain's going to rise on book four, and just everything is going to be literally on fire. Digonarthus and Bodimatrum are in the prologue, then the world explodes, then we go to Ashen and Bray's all in the same book, and you're like, wow, how did this happen? But it makes so much sense. Is that, is that book four? Is that the plot outline? That's pro- probably, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but maybe, who knows? <laughs> And there's also excerpts from the listener songs that we got in um, Words of Radiance. Oh, yeah, these are cool. Yeah. To said it was warm in the land far away when Voidbringers entered our songs. We brought them home to stay, and then those homes became their own. It happened gradually, and years ahead will still be said this how it has to be. So, like, that's obviously the Voidbringers are the humans. The humans, yeah. <laughs> which, which the singers would know, and they would just repeat the song, like, orally, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Also, the whole gradual thing, it's right there. It's literally right there that mm-hmm. the, the invasion was a gradual thing and not, like, just this one event. And it makes sense. It's, like, in the land far away, the listeners are based on the eastern end of Roshar, the... I- the humans originally settled in Shinovar, way on the west. The Isle of Staley was way on the west. Yeah. So it's like the land far away, the other side of Roshar. Well, I, I assumed that as being ashen, the warm and the land far away, but I don't know. Either one, really, because like Shinovar is more mild and temperate. Yeah, Eerie is too. Yeah, but Shinovar is especially. That, yeah, Western Roshar is a lot more temperate than Alethkar. Uh, mm-hmm. but but both interpretations make sense. Um, and we have another song. The betrayal of Spren has brought us here. They gave their surges to human heirs, but not to those who hold them most dear before us. Tis no surprise we turned away unto the gods we spent our days, and to become their molding clay, they changed us. From the Song of Secrets. Isn't it just so cool how we we read we read these songs so many times and it's it's just right there like yeah no th- the gods there it it makes sense what the the singer gods are and everything mm-hmm. like it just makes so much sense body snatchers yeah well it's interesting about the surges to human heirs because we we heard like. Yasna supposes that surge binding was used to destroy Ashen, right? In our very first quote that we read. Uh, it's the Stormfather says Dawn Shards and that surge bindings will destroy Roshar like Ashen. Mm-hmm. But, I mean... Brennan has said that like surges were involved in the destruction of Roshar, but it wasn't the same Ashen. magic. What did I say? You said Roshar. Okay. They they were involved <laughs> in the destruction of Ashen, but it wasn't the same magic system. So it easily could be an odiumy way of accessing surges, right? That's that's or what like, I assumed. Yeah. Probably it doesn't not even ODM necessarily if have he to be... showed up after they got on Roshar. Well yes, but Odium could have been influencing the destruction of Ashen. Uh, and like giving some power, and that could not have been well known from the humans of Ashen. Like, that's Maybe. totally possible. But that, like, that's, regardless, that's like, it. it was a separate magic system using like the fa- same fundamental principles. Yeah, not surges. Well, and I mean, I think the reason why I have that perception is that in the Isla Stale, that uh, they mentioned that the humans have the powers of surges and so that's not the that's not surge binding formal surge binding is of honor that we see with the radiance and so that must be a different system with the dawn singers writing about it who they're like yeah these guys are void bringers and from odium right i guess yeah. that's why i get that perception it makes me wonder if honor and cultivation gave the powers to humans originally to basically bind rules to surge binding well we know that 
the first surge binders were the heralds when right with the honor blades and then the friends started copying that mm-hmm. and honor was surprised by this yes so like i don't know if like honor and cultivation because i don't think they gave them the honor blades until like there was a war being fought true but if they see this if they see like if do we know if humans still had access to the same magic they destroyed Ashen with on Roshar? That that has a lot of variables on what. How did Ashen break? What magic was it? Was it Odium? Uh, what happened? Like it's not mm-hmm. clear. What are the Dawn shards? Probably pretty mm-hmm. central to that. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think we could can really say without knowing more about how it functioned? Like, was it a more region-locked magic system like those on Cell? Like, was it very easy to get working on another world, like Skadriel, um, Skadrian magics? We just don't know. I mean, they, they must have accessed the surges, but just differently? Question mark? Uh, but, I mean... The the whole first desolation, the, the time when the heralds came to honor, like, when did that happen? Because the Stormfather makes it sound like, oh, yeah, no, the heralds did this to trap the Voidbringers, which were the fused. But that wouldn't happen until Odium, you know, was with the singers, right? Like, it's there's yeah, a lot like, of stuff there. I think this is all tied up in with the first desolation which we still don't know yeah so i i don't know so why don't we move on from that to something that eric really wants to talk about a desolation we do know some things about it's not a real desolation but the false desolation and this was actually a thing that uh we we came up with in our part three epigraphs discussion so in those you see the uh radiance uh inputting stuff into gemstones and so we can read those memories and uh they're abandoning urethru but they also mention there's fighting going on the the enemy's pressing towards feverstone keep uh and they, they all seem pretty contemporary uh with each other really uh and there's a part where they have a strike team, and there's they're saying that uh, the unmade Ba Edomishram, uh, who who's terrifying and a high princess of the Voidbringers, uh, which we learned from the part four epigraphs, uh, she's connecting with singers and giving them forms of power, and they want to imprison her to remove the void light uh, from them and stop their transformations and give them an edge in combat. Which and, they do. Yeah. And uh, and so it seems pretty clear the enemy that they were fighting, the, the thing that Yasna suspects immediately with the recreant's vision that Dalinar shows her is that it's the false desolation. And that would be right when Ba'adamishram is providing these forms. It's not a real desolation with fused and heralds and stuff because uh, the oath pack's broken. But it, it, it's like a desolation. And so the Radiants are fighting. And so the idea, the idea that we came up with is that, well, you have been hearing from your God that uh, you're going to destroy the world and you're going to screw things up and you're the invaders and not really the good guys. And then your enemy, you, you win, you win the fight, you imprison Baadamishram and... Uh, and you do successfully stop the transformations for forms of power, but you also lobotomize all of the singers. All, and, quote unquote. Well, right. I- except, well, all except of the listeners the who connected to by the yeah, right, right. All and, of all of the contextually relevant ones, right. So it makes sense to me that given that context, presumably of that discussion of honor raving, they've learned of the truth of humans origins and stuff and their worries that the imprisonment of Ba'i is the last straw. They're like, yeah, no, we, we are actually going to screw over things 
we just enslaved a species. That's not cool. And then and then the Windrunners come back to Beaverstone Keep and they're like, nope. Yeah. That's like it. not only did they like lobotomize an entire species, like they lobotomized the original owners of this land. Right. Right. They yeah. they're they're probably Yeah, they would know that too. Right, exactly. Like I feel like that part is the part that that's the key that that's the wicked thing of eminence. Uh that uh Yeah. That would be the last the very last straw because I mean obviously the radiants still have to exist to imprison by to Mishram. So the recreants happened right after that and I I think it makes sense that it's right there because uh, what they they mentioned in the first Feverstone Keep vision that they're the Radiants are off fighting. Why why did they come back to the keep? They're fighting right there, and so right as Badamishram is imprisoned, the fighting with the singers stops. Right, and then they they just uh, you know, well, it might not have stopped right then because like Joe Schmo Radiant probably wouldn't know what's going on. So like well, they true. probably continue fighting for a little while, and then they realize like. Oh, they're These not guys fighting, aren't back. fighting back. No, not at all. Yeah, within within like an hour, y- you'd figure out that something's really wrong. Uh, I was going to say like, like fifteen minute. minutes. Maybe. Like, yeah, I was going to say like, like maybe minute. maybe the th- maybe if the thrill were involved, it would be closer the, to an the, hour. The, the hour but is them the traveling back to Feverstone Keep. Involved here. The hour is them traveling back to Feverstone Keep and making okay. their final decision. Right. Yeah. Like within an hour of that happening, I think they've made their decision. Right, like mm-hmm. very quickly, but uh, there there's some epigraphs from Worlds of Radiance, the the in world Worlds of Radiance, uh, that if if you think about this context, well, let's just read this and see what you guys think. Now, as the Windrunners were thus engaged, arose the event which has hitherto been referenced, namely that discovery of some wicked thing of eminence, though whether it be some rogueries among the Radiant's adherents or of some external origin, Avena would not suggest. That they responded immediately and with great consternation is undeniable, as these were the uh, were primary among those who would forswear and abandon their oaths. The term recreance was not then applied, but has since become a popular title by which this event has n- is named. This act of great villainy went beyond the impudence uh, which had hitherto been ascribed to the orders, as the fighting was particularly intense at the time. Many attributed this act to a sense of inherent betrayal, and after they withdrew, about 2,000 made assault upon them, destroying much of the membership. But this was only nine of the ten, as one said they would not abandon their arms and flee, but instead entertained great subterfuge at the expense of the other nine. Which we know are the skybreakers. Yeah, the, the the last ones are the skybreakers. But the wicked thing of eminence, like honor, would have been raving the whole time that uh, about about this. And yes, you discovered that uh, humans' origins. But the wicked thing of eminence, the last straw, imprisoning by Demishram. That they're just like the fighting's intense. We're out. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. And and also, you know, just, just reading that, it's it's making me think, oh, the 2,000 made assault upon those Windrunners that abandoned their oath and just, like, murdered all of those Radiants. And then the Skybreakers are, like, screwing over the people who abandoned their oaths, too. Like, I, there's going to be some stories about that. We're going to hear about that some at some point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we already know that there's going to be contention between the orders, because, yeah. like, um, Spark, Malata's um, ra- um, friend, is all for, like, destroy the Radiance, like, just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. And, it, like, it the is- Skybreakers are working for the Sinkers. <laughs> well, yeah. It is kind of crazy that they would all abandon their oaths, but it it's not, like, one day. That no. recreance is the one the Windrunners abandoned that, and then others did soon, right? Mm-hmm. That That's yeah. kind of my impression. Yeah. That's fair. And it ma- it does make sense that the Windrunners would be the first yeah. to throw down their arms, not because I'm prescribing any sort of, you know, 
cowardice upon them. It's actually the opposite of that. Because you see, if if all of the Windrunners are similar to Kaladin and Bridge 4, they all have this sort of hero complex, which I love about them. Yeah. But they do. And so you tell the hero of justice, because literally their thing is about doing the right thing and protecting, protecting. people and yeah. being just. And then, well, holy crap, we just, like, just in terms of inner inner justice, not law justice. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Justice according to what is the right thing, which may or may not be well, in agreement with the letter of the law. Right. Um. So you have the heroes of justice saving the day and enslaving an entire species. They would not be cool with that, right? Like that that they would not be cool with it. And, and I yeah. yeah. And Windrunners are very passionate about this. And so <laughs> it makes perfect sense for them to say, bleep this, I'm out. <laughs> and and not only that, but the the Windrunners could have sold it to themselves. Because this is a very serious thing. They're obviously very close to their spren, right? Mm-hmm. They, they've probably been talking about this whole, hey, we're going to destroy the world. What do you think about it? Uh, uh to, to their spren, right? And, you know, they'd converse about it for a long time. But the Stormfather said, ah, they tried to protect the world. That That's why the Recreants happened, right? And mm-hmm. so the, the Windrunners could be like, well, this is how we have to protect the world. We have to abandon our oaths in order to, to save the world. And, like, that could be a thing Windrunners do, Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and for some, for at least some of them, I imagine that, okay, you're there, you're fighting, you just realize that you've not only embottomized an entire species, you have enslaved them, and then you've been slaughtering them since it happened because you didn't realize they were fighting back right away. There has got to be a significant portion of the Windrunners of that generation for whom that was the oath-breaking. Not choosing to put down their swords after the fact... They saw what they had just done and realized we broke our oaths. Yeah, sure. Like yeah. as Kaladin says, like the at that point, laying down the blade and the plate was a formality. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's exactly what he says. Yeah, right. It is a formality. They they already thought that they broke their oaths. Right. Yeah. That's that's so true though. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it's less like I want to I want to kill my best friend and more their best friend was already dying because they had broken their oaths. Yeah, I could see that. And and all this stuff with the recreants is super shrouded in mystery purely because the abandoning of that many shards causes a huge amount of chaos in the world. And so that that time period, we don't really know a lot of details of it. Because, uh, like, think about, like, up till then, like, shard blades belonged to Radiance. Like, right. n- normal people didn't have them. No. And you just, without a spread, you're just like, I have a shard blade. Like, any old idiot could have one and just murder tons of people. Like, that would be... It's a huge time of chaos. So all of this this stuff, like, people a generation later wouldn't understand why the Radiants, you know, abandoned their shards. They they wouldn't understand that at all. They they would not even understand our enemy is now, like, catatonic. What happened there? They wouldn't understand that that was important there. They they wouldn't understand any of that. Because the Radiants are dead. Because I guess a, <laughs> the people who pick up the shards just murdered them. <laughs> like... Greed mm-hmm. is a nasty thing. And I bet Odia was just like over here rubbing his hands. Oh, and absolutely, a day of great like, passion. Feed me, yeah. Feed me. <laughs> oh, that's what I was gonna say. The other thing with the recreants is that it could have been easier for the knights to give up their oaths because uh, the enemy, the singers, are lobotomized. They're not going to fight back. And it's just like, well, we're going to screw things up. I I guess we ended the war. Yeah. Right? It, it 
what's the point of the Radiant staying around if there's no enemy to fight? Because ever since the last Desolation, the Singers still would have been fighting some and been not cool with this, right? Oh, yeah. But, but then, like, the Singers, are they're not an enemy force anymore. And so it's, it's not like they think that the world is more in danger from the enemy. They're, they're thinking that it's more in danger from themselves, right? Yeah, I, I think that's like the best understanding we can have at this moment. And I fully expect Brandon to like write something in book four that will completely upend all of this. We haven't but, heard all about the recreants. Like we, we had to look really closely to Bob and Mishram to even piece that together. I think that's going to be a reveal in book, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's I can see also, that. There's also the question of you know from individual to individual and from order to order mm-hmm. of how they perceive things. Because obviously True. the Skybreakers as a whole decided Storm, you guys were going to stick around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think like. Depending on order and person, a mix of these factors affected you differently, but it all kind of led to the same place. And there's no saying that, like, individuals of orders maybe kept their oath. They didn't maybe. abandon. But it's, like, the order as a whole. Like, there might have been, like, two Windrunners after that point, but, mm-hmm. like, they weren't a, a formal order. They just kind of like lived their life in quietude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I would love, totally I would love to see a short story from from one of their perspective if that actually happens. That would be amazing. Yeah, it would be just, so sad. Yeah, I know. I would love the crap awesome. out of that. That'd be like, give me more of the pain and suffering. That's the most painful. Okay. Yes. But in this episode, that, Eric becomes Odium instead of Ruin. That's that's true. That there are there are definitely days where I I'm feeling some Ruin. Maybe some days where I'm feeling very Odium. You know, it's in t- it's possible. I'm not a good person, guys. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. I'm not a good person. I would definitely take one of those two shards. I would I would transform this realm su- substantially. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Does that make me preservation then? Being like, probably. no, Eric, stop, probably. stop. Probably. As long as I can be Dominion. That would be a cool fight. That'd be cool. Um, Anyways. That, 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 that we could make a YouTube video on. What, what of us like casting that. ourselves as the shards? Yeah, yeah, that, that's cool. I think, I think that's cool. Uh, and like combos like that. But... Some people really didn't like the reveal of the recreants. They they couldn't understand killing the spren. I mean, I, I it's enough for me. I don't know. I think it depends on cuz like you really need to separate yourself from the situation when you're trying to analyze this. Because yes, for me, I probably would have been one of those people who kept their oath and just kind of hid out in the background. I don't think I could have gone through with killing my spren. Unless, number one, my spren already died because I had broken my oath. Sure, right. Yeah. Or, you know, my spren said, hey, lay down your oaths. Because there's an argument, but, like, the thing is, is, like, just because you wouldn't personally do something, or don't think you would, you don't know because you're not in that situation, doesn't mean that other people wouldn't come to a different conclusion when in the same scenario, first of all. And sure. second of all, we don't know how involved the Spren were. You know, yeah. the Spren, those honor Spren may well have said enough. I don't want, after what we just did, I don't want to do anymore. Let me sleep. And- yeah, like, I don't want to, like, help people anymore. Just kill me now. I, I, th- yeah, there's a big question on uh, how much the Spren were involved in the Recreants. And I think it's got to be a non-zero amount, right? Yeah. If you're a Windrunner and you hear about the origin of humanity, what's the first thing, the first thing you're going to tell? You're Spren. 
That's what you're going to talk about. Well, that chances are your spread is going to be there like when you find it out. Absolutely. Like, but you're going to process that with your spread. Y- yeah. You're going to process honor raving that you're going to destroy the world with your spread. And then at the end, when this rate, this species is lobotomized, I, they could both be like, yeah, no, we, we're, we're the bad guys. I understand mm-hmm. that now. We, we, need, we need to save the world. By killing me. And like pattern, you, you see in Words of Radiance, pattern's like cool with yeah, no, you you you'll you'll kill me eventually, Shalon. Like you 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 can do that. That's that's fine. Like so some spren could be more okay with that than others. But I, I think the spren have to be involved, right? Yeah. They have to be. And also like spren are not humans. Their mortality is different from ours. We see Syl die in Words of Radiance. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of these spren would have bonded many Radiance, even, right? Yeah, over time, yeah. Yeah, and they could, a spren could be like, yeah, I, not only did we really screw up here, but let me list ten other times Radiance really did something bad. That's not cool, and... And eventually they're just like, no, it's enough. We we ended the war. Now we need to protect the world from ourselves. Yeah, so I really, I really don't think because it just doesn't make sense for how closely how close of a relationship we've seen all of the radiance on screen having with their spren. It just doesn't make sense for them to unilaterally decide to murder them. There no. was more at play here. The humans didn't yeah. go like, e- screw you, s- stab my blade into the ground and kill you. No, that is absolutely not what happened. No, I think it was a very difficult decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like and that I, march from the battlefield to Feverstone Keep. That's sadness right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that That's an internal monologue I definitely would read from brandon just the the pain of a radiant just about to you know mm-hmm. give up their shards oh hey ooh. hey brandon you want to give us a holiday present <laughs> ooh, that'd be good I, I that would be good emergency holiday podcast right there we, we would do that um mm-hmm. but uh so, some people were confused as to whether uh the spren knew of the recreants but i think it's pretty clear that uh in Shadesmar that they they just don't like talking about it yeah, right? yeah. absolutely. How could they not know? I know he, there, there was a discussion late, late, late at night sometime where people were were not sure. But like looking, looking at you know what the spren say, they're just like, we don't really want to talk about that whole genocide of our you know families and stuff. It's kind of taboo, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah like, I, I, I think it is known, but it might not be widely known because like it, it is such a taboo. So, like, that information does exist in Shadesmar? I think it is absolutely known among the pe- the generations who were around at that time. Yes. It is absolutely public knowledge. How much of that gets passed down is mm-hmm. may- might vary from spren to spren, because, like, some spren parents are probably going to tell their kids, stay away from humans at all costs, and let me tell you why. Well, you'd see Deadeye in Shadesmar. You Just see them. Just wandering around. They're, they're always... They're in Shadesmar, separate from their corpse. Like, Aiko's dad is, it, they say, on the boat, and if he wasn't locked up, he would just search out the human who held his corpse. So the dead eye, are, the spren who died, are just in Shadesmar all the time, I guess. And so if you're a spren created, born, you would, you would, you'd want to know what's up with those, right? Mm-hmm. You'd know yeah. eventually. And yeah, I mean, like, and they know what, you know, look at their reaction to Maya wandering around with Adolin. Yeah, they, they know. Uh, but they're, it also makes sense that Spren would, you know, kind of not want to talk about it, especially during a time where some Spren are like, you know what? Let's bond again. That worked out really great last time. Like, and it makes sense m- that other Spren would not be cool with that. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, we see this when there are humans around. So yeah. how much of this is it being a taboo and how much of it is 
you know what? I cannot say anything that I might not regret later, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Uh, That's certainly true. (laughs) If we had spren viewpoints and uh, spren viewpoints, that's a good idea. Do that. Uh, Do that, Brandon. Uh, But like spren viewpoints, still flashbacks. That's just what I'm thinking about right now. Uh, yeah, but, when there when there's no spread spread viewpoints when there's no humans around. Yeah, they, they would talk about different things, right? Mm-hmm. So that would be really cool to see. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was not it was not like we like like may have originally been thought. Oh yeah, let me just murder my best friend because reasons. This was not that. I really am digging the idea that the those Windrunners already felt that they betrayed their oath, and then it was just a formality. That's mm-hmm. that's really cool with that yeah, quote I like that, that we idea. read. I, I like that so much. We learned so many things on Shardcast, us included. Yes, mm-hmm. while we're doing it. You're, while you're, we're doing I mean, it. Basically, Shardcast is let's theorize and record it. Yeah. I didn't know about the body mushroom thing until we analyzed that and it was like, oh, this this happened right then. Like, right then. And it's just not mentioned in the book. Ugh. Well, um, this was... We we're learning how to search out those flags. Yes, that's right. There's all sorts of foreshadowing that we missed, I'm sure. 100%. Um... So... Moving forward is going to be interesting because now you see all of the, well, all of the, all of our viewpoint radiance obviously know and all of humankind is going to know very soon how they're going to deal with this. And we do get a little bit from the human, uh, or from the, from the radiance that we have POVs from where they're saying, oh, I won't, I won't betray you. I won't put you down. Mm-hmm. But, that might be harder if they do things that they regret as Radiance, right? Yes. But I think in the long run, this is going to be a good thing. Like, I think it being kept a secret in the past was the wrong idea. Like, you have to come to terms with this. And mm-hmm. it's like, once they come to oh, terms sure. with it, I think it will like lead to an eventual true end to the war. Mm-hmm. Because it's like you can't like come to terms with the Parshendi, the Parsh, if like you don't know that like, hey, like they used to live here, like they do belong here, like how, we can't just like we, force them to another planet. How do we balance <laughs> the faults of our ancestors with us having homes here? Like that's the real moral gray dilemma for Stormlight. It's not just this fight between shards. Even if there was no odium, this would be a big problem to and like, that, fix. Yeah. And that goes back to the, the commentary on imperialism. You know, all three of us reside in a country that was built in similar ways, minus the magic. So what do the descendants of the yeah. invaders do yeah. when faced, when having to face up to what their ancestors did? I, I think in the immediate sense, the recreance isn't that revelation about the recreance isn't going to be like a big problem because <laughs> Odium's here. We should probably do something about that, right? But I, I think eventually we'll see Radiance doing things as like, wow, you caused a lot of destruction. I don't know if that much destruction was necessary or something. And then mm-hmm. like that worries people. Well, I mean, we like- see. Go ahead. Like the Azish talk about, like these powers are dangerous. Like that's going to be like that's a major part of the coalition. Like if the Azish are just like mm, we don't like you, you're you're too dangerous. Like we're just going to back out of this coalition. That would be a very bad thing. And then you have you know already you see it reverberating of well if we're the invaders do we really want to fight anymore or do we want to go to the other side and fight with the Parsh? Yeah. Yeah. This is absolutely going to have immediate consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, even if you, like, go to the other side, like, it's not guaranteed you'll survive, because Odium is... Odium promised to save Carbronth, and that's it. And, I I don't know, I, I feel like 
any any I think we will see a radiant turn, right? I think that seems reasonable. Like more explicitly uh, than Malata. Not necessarily right? like a radiant fall. Sure, yeah, yeah. But that's not going to end well because Odium wants he he will he will destroy. He the fused mm-hmm. want to destroy Roshar. They they want Good. to just wipe humans off there. So that will not end well for them. No. Yeah. But seeing seeing our our fledgling radiance having to deal with this as they're growing is going to I think you're right, Ian, going to make them stronger in the end. It's going yeah. to shape how they develop and for some of them it's going to shape their ideals. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely true. For sure. We could like have a I'm just imagining like a, a Kaladin ideal that's like protecting even my enemy or something. I, I don't know. It's not well formed, but like, mm-hmm. yeah, or like fight the fused, but not the common singers. Like the common singers aren't the enemy, which is kind of what Kaladin already knows. He knows that an, the common singers an, are not the enemy. Yeah, or a new radiant. Like I will, you know, protect even those I once hated. Yeah. Or like edge dancers, like I remember those who have been forgotten. Like Yeah. Yeah. Like I will oh, remember who like got forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the slaves for two millennia. Oh yeah, those 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 those, yeah. those, those guys. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't blame the original knights for I I don't know. Like I don't know how much of a secret they necessarily kept it, but it did seem like it was recurringly coming up and so it was not well known outside of that generation yeah like people were like they found out they were sworn to secrecy sure and then it was found out again sure over and over and over again at least the last generation of radiance if they weren't murdered they probably would have told people it's it's almost like keeping things a secret is a bad idea usually usually yes sometimes sometimes it's okay but yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how how it's different because you know they imply that the radiants know about this, but how many of them found out after they had already sort of reached as far in their ideals and in their growth as they were going to go? Yeah, compared to these new generation of radiants who learned it very early on and have to wrestle with it as part of their journey. Before they swear that fifth ideal or anything, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but, and I mean, and also, like, all of their immediate reactions of, I don't want to kill you, should tell us a little bit of something about how the, the recreant radiance felt. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a really unpleasant year or multiple years of them struggling with this truth. And, the fu- and they probably wouldn't give up their oaths while there's fighting happening like yeah we got we got to protect the city like we got to do that but they're they're struggling with that a lot mm-hmm. but like as for like will they destroy roshar do we think they will destroy roshar cuz i if it happens i don't think that's going to be the end i could see this being Climax of part five, they destroy Roshar. And then we have to deal, deal with it for the back five. But that like, would I don't be think a that's a crazy ending to book five to just, to, let's just yeah. destroy the world. Either they destroy Roshar, period, or they destroy Roshar as we know it. Because already you're seeing the Parsh reclaiming towns, starting settlements. Kolinar as you know, it's part of it's gone. Kingdom, yeah. A left car is broken and shattered. So you're going to see this upheaval and this rearrangement of countries, of cultures, of tradition. And so this Roshar might very well be destroyed culturally. And yeah. They have to restart from that, or they could just physically blow it up. But it would be. Interesting I don't think they're to going to like it. blow it up. But well, like what what I'm what I'm imagining is you could have like 
a quarter or half of the continent just like broken into a ton of pieces. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. not the world has exploded. That won't happen. But like a will it? big I mean, who kn- <laughs> that would be a crazy end to book five is just we destroyed the planet. The the next part of Stormlight, we're on Ashen and Braze. Like, yeah. Oh, Basically okay. the shattered planes writ large. Yeah. But like I'm just imagining, Carrie, back five map, or maybe even book four, we have a map of all these new kingdoms and stuff and reforming that. And that like I'm so just cool. imagining like a giant crater somewhere that the Surge Binders created. And it's like, oh, no, that, that wasn't very good. That was, that was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how, oh, that sounds awesome. What if we got like a historical map and the map now in like those back five books? Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah. That would be really neat, but yeah, like, yeah, something like that where you know the the con maybe and it, is it Roshar the planet or Roshar the continent that they're yeah. destroying? Maybe they're going to a different continent. Maybe they're shattering, like you said, like the shattered planes where there is still physically a planet. It's just it's a not little great. bit more lived in than it was before yeah. we all started trying to kill each other. Yeah, like. You need the to cat- import the flying cities of Ashen. <laughs> Just get those orbiting. Shove it, shove it through a perpendicularity. It'll be great. Um, yeah. Turn I mean, it the, into the, a spaceship. The cataclysm of Ashen was like it rendered it inhabitable. So if we see like the, the surface, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, but if if we see that, man, that's so crazy to think about. Like the end of a book is. What a downer of an ending of a book, but it's, I'm sure it'll be awesome. Like maybe there's some massive fight and it's like, no, if we don't do this, we're going to die. And so they do this horrible thing. And then they're like, oh, that was, we, we just, every bit as bad as we thought it was going to be. (laughs) Well, it just, what occurred to me is like using a nuke, like you could think that it's justified, but it's still really bad. Right. And like mm-hmm. horrifying, right? Yeah. And we we know we know something big is going to happen that we should be scared of. And until this book came out, I thought it was going to be Odium showing up in person. <laughs> That's Guess true. who got proven wrong? Yeah, right. He's he's, he's already there. So, but uh, what could be what could be worse? What could be scarier than Odium actually showing up and taking? Like taking active part in things blowing to the up, point blowing that he up is Roshar. literally on the battlefield. Do well, it. I don't think he would like. I think it would be like, yeah, like they destroy the planet, but that like forces Odium away, for, and like then like he for like a short respite. So like I don't think he would be involved in destroying the planet because it's just like no. he doesn't have to be. Like no. you're going to destroy this planet. Yeah, maybe Odium's whole gambit is, let's create this really terrible war. Let's force these Radiants to destroy Roshar. That's a, that could be as simple as this plan. Mm-hmm. Let's have them break themselves. That's kind of Odium's mm-hmm. whole thing, right? Because, like, Odium isn't going to take direct action while Cultivation is still around. Oh, Just for the same reason, like, she won't take direct, a- direct action. Oh! I know we're getting so off the rails, but what if a horrible cataclysm happens and then Odium, maybe Odium doesn't leave, but Cultivation just has rain to, like, remake things. How cool would that be? Oh, like she fixes the planet? So, in some capacity, I imagine it would take a while. Yeah, but like regrows yeah. the planet. Yeah. Well, a full shard could remake the planet yeah. fairly easy. Yeah, yeah, right. But, like, well, I mean, it's easier to recreate the planet when there's not things on it. <laughs> you you have to take a little more care if... I mean, if depending Zazen on did the, it. Well, yeah, but they were underground. Like, you're significantly changing things. But how crazy would that be? There's a cataclysm. We're, we're in back five. It's not quite destroyed, but, like, Cultivation's, like, been fixing it and stuff. And how crazy could that be? Mm-hmm. That just makes me think. For, that just makes me uh, remember when we were at in line for Alloy of Law, and it was the uh-huh. first morning we woke up there, and Will walked outside. It was like, oh, there's a mountain there. 
<laughs> yeah, <you're just laughs> it makes there. me think of cultivation just dropping things yeah. places. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like ah, uh, we this this crater. Let's put a mountain on there. That's the simplest way to deal with this. <laughs> let's just do that. The, this this whole it, it just turns into cultivation playing The Sims in build mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. But I mean, ha- just put a wall around Moash. So he yes. dies. Hey, hey, hey. Marsh is cool. This is a little uh, one by one wall. Marsh mm-hmm. is cool, guys. Uh, no, he's not. He deserves to die. Hey, no, he's like, you, like you said, Eric, any idiot can have a shard blade. That's true. That's that, yeah. that true. Well, now he has something even worse because he doesn't have that regulation, but from the spren, right? Mm-hmm. But if Odium's gambit is for the surge binders to just screw themselves over with a, a destruction, right? Because Odium's very certain of this. He's certain, no, you will destroy Roshar. Uh, he's just instigating that with a war, but, I mean, Odium would still be there. He he thinks he's going to recreate the world. So, back five, we could just have, like, cultivation and cultivation versus Odium rather than the front five being honor versus cultivation. And so, we see a lot more honor and we see more cultivation. Honor versus backfire. cultivation, Eric? Odium versus cultivation. We'll edit it in post. Honor versus odium is what you were trying to say there. Yeah. yeah. Honor versus odium in the front five and cultivation versus odium in the back five. We'll edit it all. We'll edit it all. Actually, we won't. but Because it's funny. But like, how cool would that be? Like back five, like cultivation's helping and she's fighting odium. Yeah. Like after this destruction. And for all we know, back five, Dalinar will be honor, and he can yeah, be fighting I mean, that's Odium entirely while cultivation true. is, like, regrowing the planet. That is entirely possible. Who the crap knows where Dalinar is gonna be? I have no Who idea. knows? Um, Navani yeah. to be honor. <laughs> I don't know. Navani takes um, cultivation. Yeah. Easy. That would Easy. be nice. That would involve the current cultivation to die, which would be sad. That would be sad. But yes, like, it would. her love died thousands of years ago. She might want to go with him to the beyond. And well, she couldn't she do that anytime? No. Like ruin and preservation. No. Could just take. Well, no, no. Shards cannot take... go to the beyond. No. Eric. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, he's asking Ian. if she can baton pass the shard and then no. go into the oh, field. Okay. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying if cultivation wanted to end things, you just directly attack Odium and just call it good, like uh, Vin. But did she's not Ruin. an idiot. Like she's not going to like <laughs> play that move. If like she could, do that. Going to... she could do that though. That is the thing that she I... could do. Right? Like cultivation is not an idiot. Like she's not going to <laughs> waste title. her life in a futile bid to get rid of Odium. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a thing we've seen shards do that they could just no, but annihilate. No, she each other. she is too much of a planner, and also for sure. culti- cultivation, cultivation and odium are not as directly opposed to one another as ruin and preservation were, which is part of why you had that reaction in the first huh. place. Well, uh, but I, I'm just saying. I don't think cultivation's motivation is that her lover died uh, thousands of years ago and wants wants to like, end it now. That's no, what I'm, I'm not, saying. I'm not she saying that's just like do that the now. entirety of her motivation. I'm just saying like that might be a factor for like why she would sacrifice herself. I'm saying if she wanted to sacrifice herself, she could have done that uh, thousands of years ago. She could have just do. She could just do that right now. She yes. could just literally do that right now. But, she but she's not like. Like wanting to be with her to. dead lover is not so driving overwhelmingly right. important that like she's right. going to do it when it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like Vin sure. did not sacrifice herself until Elend was dead. <laughs> yeah, but like, wouldn't you know as cultivation? This is a stupid conversation. This is a dumb conversation. <laughs> you get yes, the, you get the you're best. Wrong. <laughs> no, you're just mentioning a factor that's just irrelevant because if it was relevant, then she would have done it. So it's just not relevant. That's what I'm saying. It's one like a factor, very minor, a very minor thing. One it's factor not, out of many does not, not mean relevant. that like it it's, doesn't count at all. Well, yes. it's, it's mostly irrelevant. I don't think that's we should end real. this like <laughs> before we murder each other. You you, you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> the uh the the soap opera story of of cultivation. It's not maybe a soap or opera. maybe I know I'm 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 being hyperbolic to make fun of ourselves. 
Yeah, right. That's fine. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, honor Dalinar while cultivation does stuff. But I, I do like the thought that them destroying Roshar is like destroying the status quo, that, possibly that's... wrecking the continent a little bit. I think that's the best idea for book five I've heard of, of why you need a time skip. It's like, well, you you really you screwed it. up Roshar, so we need a time skip now because we can't just do a book immediately after because it's the biggest change that you could possibly make yeah right yep yeah. all right you guys so you can follow us of course at 17thshard.com on facebook twitter youtube soundcloud as 17th shard go yep. figure comment below on all your feels about the recreants and how you didn't like it or how you liked it what you thought don't forget to compare your pronunciation to ours in the comments as well. Oh. Yes, we see you guys. Yes, we do. <laughs> we definitely do. <laughs> we certainly uh, mm-hmm. And Tell yeah, Eric that I'll- he's wrong. <laughs> We're like arguing over literally nothing. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> like, at this it's point, so it's so dumb. <laughs> what? As always, if you have a, a theory or an idea that you want to see featured on a podcast, feel free to leave it in the comments. Oh, we definitely. can't promise we can't promise that we'll get to everything, but we are always looking for ideas to explore on the show. So whether or not we actually use your idea, we still appreciate getting them. We we have a long list of podcasts we want to do. We would like to add to that list because I'm always concerned we're going to run out of ideas. So keep keep them coming. That'll be great. Thanks. And so until next time, we will see you around and happy theorizing. Bye. Bye. Call.